Hello everyone. Today we are going to do an interesting analysis and in reverse engineering of a sample that I actually found of one of my incident response engagements. I had this very uh, interesting client which was attacked by a threat group and was implemented with some backdoors and it was actually a threat actor that attacked the IoT device and Linux servers that was exposed to the internet of this client and basically was infected with, me, with this attack Mirai botnet sample. Um, so uh, basically it's an ARM based Mirai botnet sample, which is very interesting. Um, you know, Mirai botnet actually has a very interesting business uh, business logic, or you can, uh, uh, or, or you can call it a business model. Basically, uh, those threat actors, many of them, go and discover as many as exposed internet-facing uh, servers, IoT devices, routers like Huawei and stuff like this. They exploit specific C well-known CVEs, uh, one days, uh, even maybe zero days. They go and brute force their their way to open SSH ports, um, telnet and stuff like this. They even use default passwords for DVR and cameras to implement their um, their samples and basically making those attack machines as their zombies or as part of their bot botnet army. Uh, so yeah, you can read a lot about Mirai. So as you can see, 39 out of 62 vendors detected as Mirai botnet. Um, if you go to community, you'll see that yeah, even VS under, VX Underground and other uh, researchers, analysts, and even uh, automated sandbox actually detected as Mirai Botnet, ELF compiled binary for ARM processors. Uh, basically, Mirai used uh, samples for, you know, they, they target many kind of CPU architectures. It can be ARM. Uh, Intel x86, x64, MIPS, and so on. So in this specific case, we took ARM because I want to give you a bit of like introduction to how to approach and reverse engineer um, ELF binaries or more specifically ARM-based assembly instructions. Now, if you go to behavior, you can see that many techniques was used, uh, execution of uh, like uh, get post request or double get uh, commands, uh, communication to many uh, servers across the world that are probably part of the Mirai, uh, you know, uh, base of operation or base of C2 servers. Uh, many SO objects and pros were touched by this by this sample. Um, they use many type of resistance. Um, one of them was actually very interesting. Um, the, the, they were using they were using two persistence backdoors uh, implemented in this specific client. One of them was you know classical cron job, and the second one was uh, I don't remember how it name how it's named, but you have uh, like a file uh, for uh, vim dot vim um, or called dot dot vim info. It's a persistent mechanism that I didn't really know about, and it can be used in Linux. And it's actually, if you put it in the home directory or the home folder of a, of a targeted user, um, basically it can be used like a cron job, which is very interesting. So we can look, look it up and see how to implement such persistent. Uh, as you can see, now the Mirai botnet sample uh, executed a lot of IP tables and UFW related commands. Uh, system CTL and stuff like this and yeah this is basically uh, the thing here let's go into deeper deeper into the sample itself so let's open up first of all in HXD the packed sample so we see the ELF magic number we see reference to UPX of course we see a lot of compressed high entropy data here you go into the end of the file, you can see a lot of those bunch high entropy data with UPX also. Um, let's open it up in Detected Easy. Throw it inside, and of course, we see that it's UPX. Uh, if we go to uh, end 
entropy see that is yeah actually packed now let's go and actually um unpack it so open up cmd go to the desktop see and let's do upx dash d of the two nine and do the dash o and out and it was successfully uh, unpacked i already have an unpacked version here uh, so let's throw it up inside detected easy and yeah now we see that it's arm without the upx part go to entropy and we see that it's not packed the value is under seven so if it's higher than seven it was it will will be considered packed now let's throw it up into hxd and we'll see that those compressed high entropy data is now decompressed and we see many reference to bash uh, commands sh commands that are running here wget commands stuff like this of course the reference to upx are gone also after the unpacking was made so uh, now we can go and actually extract some strings and let's do strings on the unpacked version and output it to out.txt open it up on visual studio code and let's see what kind of commands we see here we see some get and post requests um like removing of files uh, doing some ch mode stuff um see many interesting things and interesting enough we see that actually they go and execute bash commands so it occurs to me that they use some kind of a utility like shc for example shc is a utility that actually go and takes a bash script or an sh script and literally goes and basically compiles it into an elf binary where it's for arm based cpu architectures uh, amd uh, x86 uh, of intel and so on and yeah if you go you'll see all of those commands uh, basically they also use this interesting user agent called rootsec on you and yeah the fact that ids and ips and even edrs in this specific organization are so that they use many very well-known edrs um and seams sock and firewalls and ips and ids um in their network and none of them actually detected it which was very odd okay uh, we see here invocations of functions and other shell commands and you can go on and on and on and basically yeah that's it um if we even go and search for stuff like cv we don't see it but if we search for huawei we can see uh, yeah reference to huawei um basically it, those are cvs or uh vulnerabilities that they go and exploit they use busybox to execute commands on such devices it's a very well-known technique used by uh, by mirai botnet and other botnets uh targeting linux uh, iot devices machines and servers um yeah so this is for strings so now for me i want to validate that it was actually using something like shc to like taking an, a bash or sh script and compiling into an elf binary uh, we can go i have a wsl installed here we can do read elf dash s uh, basically do uh, pointing it to the unpacked file and the point here whenever you see the type of the section is prog bits it can be a good indicator that the attackers used something like shc or something else maybe to compile a bash or an sh script into any elf binary okay 
So our next step is actually going and reverse engineering uh, and understanding how those bash scripts inside the LF binary is actually executed. Now it's an interesting question because okay, you have a bash script that are in fact executed, but you want but we want to understand how they are executed. Now it's not like an exe file in Windows that you will see like use of Windows API functions like shell execute or even create process with some um, specific arguments and so on. Here it's a little bit different. In Linux, you have what's so called a syscall. And the syscall is like the equivalent of Windows API functions in Windows, not exactly because in Windows you have a Windows API functions, next you have a native API functions, and from there it goes into what's so called a syscall. But in Linux, it goes and using a syscall without uh, too much or too many intermediate functions. Again, it really depends on the code that was used, if it's C or Rust and stuff like this, and the manner or the way of how it were to be compiled, like with GCC and stuff like this. So now let's go into IDA. Now we know it's 32 bit. And let's open it up here. Oh, sorry, it was 64 bit actually. It's a 32 bit uh, version, but I was using i64 for 64 bit. So it doesn't really matter for us. Oh, okay. So now it's not the main function that what we see here. If we do, do control E, we have the start function here. Okay. So this is the start function. It goes and use those ARM instructions in order to load the bash code into R0. And basically it will go and execute this bash code eventually. Okay. Now, if we go back and go in into actually the bash code here, or even be before that, we can go into here, let's see if I remember it right here. And eventually it will go and use a fun function that I named here. It was uh, named uh, differently, but now I named it as SVC execution. And basically it will take the bash code here and loaded it for the purpose of this execution. Um, yeah, let's see if I remember it. Uh, where it was. Um, yeah. And somewhere here in between, it will go and execute the code. So yeah, here I found the piece of code. This was this is the actual code here. So this subroutine will eventually come and do this SVC execution. Now SVC is like for in x86 for Intel uh, based CPU architectures, you have the Cisco instruction or Sys Enter for 32-bit version, but in ARM you have this SVC instruction. So if I go inside, we will see a move of some instructions, and then we will see eventually this. SVC. This is how it will be executed. Now let's go into the bash code itself here. And now if we go into this routine, we'll go into code execution start here. And now we can see here all of those IP table commands. So for each of those IP table commands, if we go into the instruction, it takes the IP table command or whatever command like systemctl and pass it as a parameter to the R0 uh, register and then we branch into the sh execution here and then it will take this sh c uh, argument and do the svc execution of this sh c as we already see saw in the virus total here as you can see here so this is how it is actually made now if we go back eventually um, 
will lend to other execution of other pieces of code and um and yeah so let's search for several of those functions that already renamed um if we go to sh execution yes we have this one that one uh the bash code can see it's a very big uh, piece of code here we see that we have all of those pieces of code and we have code execution main so if we go and in, into the branch of code execution you can see other uh, type of code like this while uh, while bash script um, read link and other commands that will go and be executed here basically so yeah, this was a very straightforward of an ARM best based uh, Mirai .NET sample. Thank you very much. See you in the next videos.